What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? We meet in the presence of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. A very warm welcome on this Remembrance Sunday to St Mary's in Barningham Winter as we are endeavouring to do throughout the benefits now with our virtual services, we are trying to celebrate the parishes one by one. And so I am delighted that we have so many from the parish of Barling and Winter involved in this service. I'm grateful to Kit, to Susanna, to Colin and to Sue for all their contributions. Again, I'm grateful to the choir and to Karen and James. And I'm grateful too to Aubrey who will be playing the last post for us on his French horn. And I'm especially delighted that this morning we welcome Lieutenant Colonel Richard Peaver who will be delivering a short reflection. Today too we will be supporting the Royal British Legion as we hold all those who have been affected by war, and all those who serve in the armed forces, both for this country and throughout the world, in our prayers. As we come before God, let us first hold a moment of silence and place into God's loving and understanding presence all that weighs upon our hearts and upon our minds. All our delights, our difficulties, all that we hold dear. And so we pray this morning for all who are in bereavement, all who are affected by disabilities, all who are in pain and continue to suffer, the consequence of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. And so let us pray. Almighty God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, Govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
lesson is from the letter of James, chapter 3, verses 17 to 18. The wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Here ends the lesson. When I was at school, back in the 1950s and 60s, it was becoming quite fashionable to question the relevance of Remembrance Day. In the not too distant future, people would say, the time would come when there would be no further point in commemorating the dead of conflicts that had passed into history. Occasionally, one would even hear the ill-founded criticism that such ceremonies somehow glorified war. Of course, nothing could be further from the truth. Soldiers are among the truest pacifists, having a greater awareness than most of the real cost of warfare. In the event, public respect for this National Day of Remembrance has grown ever stronger over the years. And recent conflicts in which our armed forces have been involved have raised public awareness of the services to a level not seen since the days of conscription. War is, by its nature, sinful. Yet, as is occasionally the case with evil, some good can come from it. Self-sacrifice, courage, duty, the subordination of self to a higher cause, these and many other qualities come to the fore at times of conflict. There is an incident in the New Testament that I think encapsulates the military ethos. A centurion approaches Jesus, asking him to heal his servant. He says, for I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. The centurion is probably a tough, battle-hardened veteran, and yet here he is displaying a deep concern for the most lowly of the men under his command. This nicely demonstrates the loyalty that is characteristic of the armed forces. Every sailor, soldier and airman and woman knows that their superiors rely on them to do their duty, and at the same time that their own subordinates have confidence in them, knowing that their superiors have their welfare at heart. In a different context, St Paul writes, For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. The military community thus serves perhaps as an analogy to the Christian community. Those who have had the privilege of wearing the Queen's uniform are keenly aware of the ties of comradeship, teamwork and mutual trust which bind together those who serve in the armed forces. They share not only a common sense of purpose, service to the sovereign, to one's ship, regiment or squadron, but crucially, a profound loyalty to one's comrades in arms. There is a remark attributed to George Orwell, we sleep soundly in our beds because rough men stand ready to do violence on our behalf. Orwell's reference to rough men obscures the fact that those who take part in armed conflict are ordinary human beings subject to the usual human frailties and often exposed to hideous situations, leaving an indelible mark that can affect them for the rest of their lives. Today, many excellent military charities do wonderful work in support of ex-servicemen and women and their families. And on behalf of the Royal British Legion, can I express my thanks for the collections that are being taken today. So, as we stand by our war memorials, we hold in our thoughts those who paid the ultimate price. No doubt each of us will be thinking of our own family members and perhaps calling to mind the words of Jesus as recorded in St John's Gospel. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, and those whom we knew, and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died 
in the service of humankind. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for their tomorrow we gave our today. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. <laughs> Let us pray for the church and for the world. Let us thank God for his great goodness in our lives. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace 
to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. And so now I invite you to join with me in saying that prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In Flanders' fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders' fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders' fields. Conclusion of this service, may I again express my thanks for all who have made this possible. And my thanks again particularly to Richard for his words, to James for his technical know-how in putting all of this together. So let us pray. O God of the nations, as we look to that day when you will gather people from north and south, east and west, into the unity of your peaceable kingdom. Guide with your just and gentle wisdom all who take counsel for the nations of the world, that all your people may spend their days in security, freedom and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and all those whom you love, this day and evermore. Amen.